Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your boy Santi. If you're already here, kindly smash the like button. If you're new, kindly subscribe to the channel and support your boy as I push my way to 10,000 subscribers. In today's video, we're going to discuss the talking point from Arsenal New Aston Villa 2. That was embarrassing. That was disgraceful, disgusting, horrible. What other name can I find for that performance? when we absolutely had the chance to go two points clear at the top of the table what did we do we went out there in that game yesterday and completely shot our pants and that was so 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 annoying to see in a day where liverpool had already lost to crystal palace at home if we needed an extra motivation to win that game yesterday the fact that liverpool had already lost their game earlier before then and if we win as even if it's a one name win, we'll be two points clear at the top of the table with six games to go. Six games to go. And we absolutely threw it away. Now we we'll put City in the driving force. And <clears throat> bro, I don't know who is going to take City off that top uh, top spot with just six games to go. I'm going to start by talking about the lineup. That lineup. For me, I, I, I've always been an advocate of do not change a winning formula. We've been playing this lineup throughout the entire uh, entire first half of the season. The balance was just not there. I mean, especially that midfield declares as a six. Kayavas in the left midfield row. Odegaard, the, the balance is just not there. And it wasn't really working consistently in the first half of the season. We changed, we switched things up in the second half of the season. And we've gone 11 games on beating in the Premier League. Won 10 of those games and, you know, drew one away at City. And yesterday, when we had the chance to go top of the table, that was when Mikel Ateta felt like, okay, I want to turn this, uh, I, I, I want to switch things up, go back to the old ways. Avat has been working up front. You decided you want to bring him back to the midfield for whatever reasons. And George, okay, fine. You did that. You you brought Jojo into the into the starting lineup. And jo, I'm sorry, you brought, uh, brought Zinchenko into the starting lineup. You know to aid our build up and bring us some sort of control in the midfield. That wasn't really happening. I mean, this is not Zinchenko slander. But I know he created a few chances, but in terms of control in midfield, he wasn't giving us that yesterday. And you kept him on for that long, despite the fact that he's been a defensive liability in that game. Every dangerous moment, uh, moment Aston Villa had, you know, in that game came from Zinchenko's side until we considered that first goal, whereby Zinchenko was nowhere to be found. Uh, Diaby was left, uh, so, uh, Leon Bailey was left all alone on his own, on, on the far post. Zinchenko, who was supposed to be there to be marking, was absolutely nowhere to be found. And the fact, the moment you saw that this wasn't working, you, you had to take him off. And, you know, bring in Jojo or Pate to play at the base, move, uh, declarize uh, up to, to the left eighth row and Avat up front or something. And this has been happening a lot. It happened last season as well. Jesus comes, after the World Cup, Jesus got injured. Trossard was in the team. Everything was clicking, beautiful football. The moment Jesus came back, Ava didn't even have a bad run of games. You dropped him immediately and brought Jesus back into the team. And it absolutely cost us. We all know what happened. And now, again, Jesus and Zincheko are back into the team. You're trying to snake them back into the team yet again, despite the fact that we've been doing absolutely fine. Why these guys were... Bro, I'm a big Zinchenko fan. I'm a big Jesus fan. I'm just saying, this team has been really work, uh, working in their absence. So, they are back now. Doesn't necessarily mean they have to walk back into the team. And we, we've all seen what, what happened in that game yesterday. The first time we decided to switch things around the second half of the season, go back to our old way, we absolutely got battered. We absolutely got battered. And there's one thing I've been saying. This kind of game, Villa had their moments, eat the woodwork twice. We had our moments, we just didn't convert our chances, which cost us in that poor De December run. And we've started again. Ahead of a crucial game against Bayern Munich on, uh, on Wednesday. So that line, even the game management, 
in the second half, he, abs- he, he left the subs late. You could have made the subs earlier on in the second half, but you left it so late until we considered the first goal at least. It's just so, so, so annoying to see. And even the players, starting from... I think the only per, per, uh, person I, 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 I can spare of any blame in that game yesterday is Martin Odegaard and David Dreyer because there's absolutely nothing he could have done about those goals. And Odegaard was literally everywhere. Center of every good thing that we did in that game yesterday. He didn't deserve to lose that game. He deserved all three points from that game yesterday. And what did we do? The entire team let him down. It's been like this since since that poor December run, leading the team like, like a real leader that he is. And what has the rest of the team been doing? Letting him down. We've done it again yesterday. Everybody, Trusted had no business miss, not scoring from that position. Six yards out. He just needed to tap it into... And somehow, you played it into, into the goalkeeper. Kayavat as well. Kept on making good runs. Kept on get it, getting the chances. It was just so nonchalant on the ball. Yes, he was really, really poor on the ball. I mean, it was really good off the ball. But on the ball, it was very, very poor. There's no reason why he shouldn't have converted one of those chances. At least one of those chances. And when Villa got their chances, they absolutely took it. Their first shot on target, go. Second shot on target, go. And they only had two shots on target in that game. And they converted both. We, on the other hand, wasted all of our, all, all, all our chances. And last thing I would love to touch about is Arsenal fans. We are the most reactionary fan base I've ever seen. Really. We've lost our first game of 2024. And all of a sudden, throw everybody out of the club. Saka is not good enough. Odegaard is Odegaard is him. Ateta is not good enough. Ateta out this and that. And if even the fans in the stadium. After the first goal, everybody already started leaving the stadium. Bro, what are we doing? It's not like that losing that game has, you know, thrown us out of the title race. I know it's, it's no more in our hands and we need a miracle right now to win the league. But... When the team need you most, you don't have to disappear. I mean, they happened against Brighton last season. And I can say, okay, maybe I understand what happened last season. The fact that it's been run poor, uh, poor run of games. And, you know, we it, it wasn't really looking good at that point last season. Fair enough. But this season, we've lost our first game of 2024 in the league. We've played 12 games, won 10, drew one and lost one. And you just left the team out. You, you left the team out there to hang dry. I mean, what happens to encouraging the team ahead of next game? And you know, they know the fans are there for them, and they, they know that w- not only when they are winning is when the stadium will be fully packed. That was so 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 annoying to see. Chelsea and Manchester United have been dog shit all season. I've never seen a single picture like that from any of their games. They're always there back in their team. But if this is what we're doing after every single bad result, I'm sorry, we can't be called Leaf City fans plastic if this is what we do. I, I, can't, I can't be sitting here telling people what to do with their tickets or their time or whatever. But I'm just saying we need to do better. And even the fans on social media are, oh my days, no decorum, no composure. And <laughs> bro, so what happens... If we beat Bayern on Wednesday, is he at Teta back in? Is that, will Saka be, suddenly be good again? Will Declan Rice suddenly be good again? What are we doing? This is just so, so, so annoying. We lost the game. It was an embarrassing uh, performance. It was disgraceful. They let everybody down. Everybody has every right to be angry. You have every right to criticize the team. But, I mean, there has to be limit to some things we say to these players. We, there has to be limits to some things we put out against the team, some things we say to the manager. I, you know, I've just seen a lot of things since that game yesterday and it's so, so, so annoying. For me, I'm angry as well. I'm really, really disappointed. But I'm, one thing I'm not doing is I'm not giving up until it's mathematically over. I'm not giving up on this team. I'm genuinely not giving They are the reason why I'm believing we can do this in the first place. And if there's anybody that can take us, you know, over the line, it's this team. 
So I'm personally not giving up on the team. Let me know what you think about the game and let me know what you think about our title chances going forward. And the next game against Bayern Munich <clears throat> on Wednesday, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Get involved in the comment section. Drop a like on the video and I'll see you guys on the next one.